Hey folks, Quilly Teen here and welcome, welcome, welcome to our World War Wednesdays live stream where we tend to do strategy games like Humankind, which is what we're doing today. Very excited to be playing more of this. Really, really enjoying Humankind. Loving the Let's Play that um, that I've started on YouTube. I think I've got six episodes recorded of that so far. Three are live now. Fourth one, I think, goes live just after the stream. Something like that. Or did the first one just go live? Maybe it just went live. Something like that. Really liking that campaign. Feeling good about it. Uh, finally starting to feel like maybe I've got a bit of a handle on things. Lockthar, thank you very much for the gift subs. So, did a poll to see if we should continue our game that our stream game that we started on Wednesday and Saturday. So there's two campaigns going on. There's the YouTube Let's Play, and then there was the stream game that I started last Wednesday. And it did poll to say, now that we know more about the game, should we restart on a higher difficulty? Because we're playing on Metropolis difficulty, um, which is sort of it's the default, but I think that's just sort of one low one one notch on the kind of the easy side. Um, and it was pretty overwhelming. It was like 75% of people were like, yeah, yeah, start start a new game. So I think that's what we're gonna do over here. Um, because we should, A, we should be able to do things better, but also add on a higher difficulty. I'm tempted, I'm, I think we're going to try Emperor, Empire difficulty here, which is one harder, it's two harder than what we were streaming, it's one harder than what I'm doing on YouTube. Um, Nation, which is what I'm doing on YouTube, is the AI doesn't get any bonuses or penalties, it just plays at full strength, but, you know, n all the math is the same for all players. On Empire, the AI is going to get a bonus of some kind. I, I don't know. The problem is, and I did some Googling, um, as far as I can tell, like, you know, when I you Google humankind difficulty settings and things like that, you can get a list of what the difficulties are, but not what they do. So I don't know how much harder this is going to make things. I did previously test the maximum difficulty, which is called humankind, which is more difficult than civilization. All right, a bit of burn there, I would say. Um, and it is ludicrous. It is ludicrous. Maybe I'll maybe I'll figure it out at some point, but I'm not trying this today. So I think we're going to go Empire. We might... <laughs> Have you noticed the character looks a lot like me? Wow. Huh. <laughs> you don't say, huh? Um, so yeah, we might, get the, we might get wrecked on Empire. Because we are still learning the game. And figuring out... Like, we know how to play the game, but we're still sort of figuring out, like, should, you know... Is it how much science do we need to rush early versus how much production do we need to get early versus how many military units do we need to get early? Or more importantly, how much territory do we claim versus founding cities versus attaching territories to cities? Where's the balance? So we don't know where those sweet spots are right now. <laughs> You're at war with me right now? Nice. Uh, so drops are enabled. You should be able to get a copy of my avatar, uh, but just by watching. There's theoretically going to be ways to just share avatars as well. I, d I don't know how that works, but um, maybe that'll be a thing. Uh, thought about setting the pace to slow. Now, I don't know if this actually changes anything in the game. In terms... So, in Civ, you've got different speed settings. And the slower speeds slows down how quickly you get research, how much time it takes to build things, etc., etc. For this, it might just change the end date. It might just make the game longer. Um, and in my personal games that I was playing, I was having issues with the game ending before I'd finished all the text. So we're gonna go slow and see what it looks like. In terms of the map, I've got the world shaped to random. Uh, I haven't tweaked any of the other values over here. Some of the values, depending on what map type gets picked, don't actually get used. Uh, and we'll see where it goes from there. So it does slow down. Okay. Well, then maybe I'll just leave it on normal, then. Let's just leave it on normal. I mean, slower pace will give us more opportunity to move our units around, but I think we'll just leave it on normal. Uh, let me go and tweak the um, the what game command uh, to do that. If you haven't done it already, you can go and hashtag name, uh, and they'll get in a draw. We'll use that for our city names. However, the first city we found, our capital, will be called Questionable Muffins. So, uh, hold on, normal pace. I'll just remove the line completely. Um, one of the issues that I've had with the the idea for like doing Let's Play series and things like that, I don't know what the thumbnail or even the title of the series, because if I'm playing Civ, for example, or EU4, or anything like that, the title and what I use for the thumbnail will be whatever civilization I'm playing or whatever leader I'm playing as. But in Humankind, I'm going to be playing as myself. That way. It's mirrored. So that way, I'm playing as myself. And our civilization, well, we don't pick one from the start. We end up going through like a ton of them before the end of the game. So I can't incorporate that at, at all. So 
went back and forth, had some interesting discussions on Twitter and stuff like that about different ideas, and ultimately came down to the idea of, I'll just use a basically a random sort of code name. And I, I went on Twitter and asked for suggestions. I got like dozens, if not a couple of hundred of them, uh, you know, basically random words to use. That'll be the name of this campaign. So this let's play this campaign that we're doing right now is questionable muffin. And that's going to be the name of our capital. And I can do a thumbnail with that because the only point, the point is so that if people are looking through the YouTube videos to be able to quickly see all the videos that belong to this particular campaign. So there you go. Uh, your AI honestly dominated my first game by 2k points. Wow. And you know what? That's before. Um, yeah, let me go back to the main menu. I hadn't set up. You can you can customize your AI avatar with traits. And I hadn't actually customized it with anything until about 20 or 30 minutes ago over here. Um, and you actually unlock these archetypes by achieving certain things in the game. For example, I have actually unlocked Benevolent. I have not unlocked Cruel because I, I haven't done it yet. So um, I decided that my archetype was going to be loyal. If you're nice to him, he'll be great back to you. He's cold headed. He doesn't act just randomly. Um, and he's fairly open about cultures. Uh, militarist. So, you know, loyal, but militarist also Avenger. If you piss him off, He's never going to let you go, is is the idea. And then I had the points to spend, so I put in Brainiac. I actually was going to put in Geek, which was more what I was going for. Um, but I, but the either way, it was going to rank the uh, the difficulty as advanced. So I'm like, oh, we'll just go all the way to Brainiac. Let's pretend. Geek was appropriate. Brainiac may be a little bit much, but shut up. It makes me feel good. Hey, Nachos! Thank you very much. What is that? Finish the song. <laughs> no! No, I refuse! I refuse to read that out loud. <laughs> I'll, we'll read your joke, though. If you walked into a bar and there was a long line of people waiting to take a swing at you, that's the punchline. <laughs> um, let's go. One thing I have not seen are the cutscenes, the animations, the cinematics in this game, because um, in the betas, they weren't in there. And for the press version, they were embargoed. So I actually had to use a... Um, a command in Steam to disable all the videos. So I haven't seen any of the animations. Yes, you can change the end game uh, conditions. I don't remember where that was. Yeah, I'm just leaving it on default over here. I mean, we could change it so that, I mean, no matter what, there's always a time limit. No matter what, there's always a time limit. I'll leave it on default for now. It's going to be fine. Um, so yeah, I, I, I had to do that to disable the cinematics. So I haven't actually seen them yet. So I'm very excited to see what happens when I hit start right now. I suspect there'll be voiceover. <laughs> Dynalon. <laughs> so if you go endless, right, for the time span, does that, is there also a change in like tech times and build times? Difficulty is Empire. It's in the what game? Also, literally in the title of the stream. Which I guess is below. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some things are adjusted, some things aren't. Okay, I'm waiting for, like, the wiki to get all the information good. So, assuming there's going to be voiceover, I'm going to mute the mic here. That. Our universe contains infinite stories. Most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there is a story that bears a second look. It's your story. But the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page to you. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together, and things start to get interesting. And a bit drier. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools and weapons are invented. The hominids begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a serpent rather than an unpredictable... This is really good. This is really good. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. 
struggle and cooperation have been rewarded. The Neolithic era thought it was over. to a close. The whole world beckons. This yeah, tribe has come far, chocolate. but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? A new era, a new epoch. Okay, that was really fantastic. And I haven't seen that at all yet. Because I don't think they pre-released it anywhere or anything like that. Unborn generations also weighs upon your decisions. What sort of lives will they have? Good sense of humor. Yeah, what I like is like, you know, they learn to record their adventures and and probably exaggerate it. And I was just thinking, hey, they're like the first YouTubers, you know, recording their Let's Plays on the cave walls. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much to Wolfhound Lewis, who uh, provided a contribution to the Yoeski and Chocolate Fund. Um, one thing I've learned is tech has a functional hard cap based on era. Yes, I actually discussed that in my Let's Play because um, in my in one of the games I played on my own before I started recording YouTube Let's Play, I actually teched really hard and ran into a problem where I ran out of text in the era, um, which was very, very awkward. So you can't, it's possible to overdo science, which is interesting. Uh, lots of periods from my run where I had my researchers not doing anything because I was out of text and waiting for stars. Although thank you for getting me to the game. Yeah, so, well, first of all, thank you, uh, Wolfhound. And yeah, so that's definitely a thing. It would have been interesting if the game had some sort of mechanic. Um, I would say, if you run out of things to research, your science should convert to influence. Is, I don't know why I'm waving. I'm waving one of my, my hats around here. I think if you can't research anything, your, your science should convert to influence or something like that. Um, I think would have been a nice way to do it. Because, yeah, we have to be a little bit careful. Like, you can overdo science. Or maybe it's more like you're underdoing your stars is is the problem in that case. You've got too much tech and you're not doing enough building and expanding and, and whatever. Uh, because you've got to pay attention to the star mechanic a lot. Uh, and Kuman, thank you very much again. Pick a joke because I want you to sing that. Air used to be free at the gas station. Now it's 150. You know why? Inflation. Oh, God, inflation. Hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food. No atmosphere. Hey, two jokes about air in one. Thanks, cool man. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, add repeatable tech. Well, so the issue. I can't. I can't open up the tech tree right now because we haven't entered into the new era. But the issue is that so just like in Civ, for example, the techs are divided up into eras, but you are limited. You can't research technologies from an era beyond what you're currently in. So you have to complete the stars for your era to do that. So like we're about, we're in the Neolithic era now. Next one will be the ancient era. So we can only research ancient era texts during that time. So let's see. Uh, science pick between influence or money based on civilization. Maybe, maybe they could be some, do something like that. I assume that might be something that gets, that gets done, but we'll see. We'll see. Anywho, we've got some uh, frozen tundra looking place over here. I don't know, are we, are we in Canada? We've got an unknown resource. Oh, one thing that I haven't been 100% confident about. I think the resources that are unknown reveal themselves once you can research the tech that exploits them, but I'm not sure. They might be error locked. I haven't actually figured out exactly what causes these to become visible. I know you don't have to actually have the tech to exploit them. Once you era the, enter the era, okay. Yeah, because like, Saltpeter will reveal itself on the map before you research the saltpeter technology, but okay, it's it's airlocked. And that, that that felt like it made a lot of sense. Well, we gotta do some exploration. Oh god, I love the start of any any 4X game always feels so great. Um I think I'll go inland and stay on the high ground. The forest will like impede our movement a little bit, but I think that might be the best over here. So we got some silk. We got, it, there's actual snow falling. I don't know how well it's showing up on the stream, but there's actual snow falling over here. I'd never noticed that. Because usually, you know, you play it like a fair bit zoomed out so you can see more of the game, but... Hmm. Hmm. About the science block, if you're civic, scientific, you need... Yeah, I did see something about being able to do like plus one air attack stuff. So I guess there are ways around it. We just have, it's just have to be very aware of it. So this is going to be what, Delicious. 10 food? Or 5 food, because so it's completely time, dry. It might be better if you washed it first. Shut up, you. Next thing you're going to tell me, I'm going to have to, like, what, wear masks or something? <laughs> Silly narrator. Disease is a personal choice. Ah, we met a neighbor right away! Ah, he's going to plunder the sanctuary! This is actually really bad, because... We haven't actually seen very much. All we've gotten is five food. The tempo in the start is awful. 
Mm. Bright side, we met, we saw the mountain, but like 50 fame doesn't actually matter that much in the long run. I mean, I'm not going to go and attack these guys because we'll actually be down on strength. I wonder why they're at 11. Difficulty level? <laughs> People are saying restart right away. Fuck you, you son of a bitch, dirty ass bastard. I knew he was going to stand on this tile. All right, we're going to attack him. And if we don't win, we're just going to restart. God damn it. So salty. This way. Yeah, he's going to go on the high ground. Which I should have just moved there right away. That was that was actually foolish. <laughs> No, you know, like, the tempo for this is going to be so unbelievably bad. I mean, we're going to win this fight. Oh, the tempo is going to be so bad. It, okay, it's still there. It's like, did it disappear? Oh, hold on, we got an event. Yeah, give me the new unit. I don't care about movement rate right now. Give me an extra unit. That's going to be good. Even those. Although I wish you appeared somewhere else. Very clever. So we're going to get on the river and start walking along there. And I'm definitely... Well, actually, I don't know if you can heal your unit early on. We do have influence. We can actually claim a terrain right now, which is great. Um, but, you know, we got it from, from, from popping things. Actually, did we get 10 for that? Or did we get some from fighting the deer? I do kind of like that location. Okay, we'll pop a little bit more tiles before we uh, yes. we drop our first outpost. They heal by themselves because of the tribe. They just heal automatically every turn, even if you're moving around. I hadn't actually noticed one way or another. Mostly because I haven't done a lot of combat in the early phase. Yeah, the ones along the river are great because they're always 15. Ooh, hello. go extra tribe member the train here is gonna be rough but I will go for it I wonder if like I can convince him to attack me I'm the attacker but yeah We're all young. Oh, you attack me. Probably because of the defense. There you go. Yeah, we do get influence and food from that, which is at least something. Okay, I gotta go and plop down. Purple claimed over here, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna have, like, immediate conflict. I'm still wondering about a restart, because that is just, like, the positioning on this was just awful. Okay, we need to plop down these outposts. Move up a little. No, no, no. It's whiskey and chocolate. No, 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 no. Good news, everyone. We're gonna restart the game. Immediately sandwiched between two people with shit terrain. Like we have garbage terrain as well. That was going to be really bad. Especially, like, we we brought up the difficulty of the Empire. Let's, you know... Let's at least give ourselves a chance to not get immediately obliterated. Hey, Ninja, thank you very much! That was horse poop. If you don't mind my language. Mm -hmm. The race begins. And I went with seven AIs here because in our YouTube game... I've got six, there is so much and it felt a little too to, empty. To learn, but it might have just been coincidence. On one's preferences to destroy. <laughs> my early in my game earlier, you tried to cut me off from my expansion. Well, banana cabana, that's the way it's gonna go, I guess. We got some porcelain over here, which is nice. We've got a much warmer terrain this time around. Let's go for the uh, let's go high ground. I do really like finding these discoveries first because the food just gives you food and it's good for growth. 
Um, and often I like to have a lot of growth, but what's nice about this is that it gives you the else, influence, which means you, you can put down your encampment them. like instantly, your outpost. What's your opinion about the game so far? I think it's great. I think it's very, very good. Now, as a preview... So what I'm really looking for for my outpost, generally speaking, I would like to see at least 20 total value of stuff. And ideally, pretty much balance between the food and production. I say, there's not a lot of enticing tiles over here. That's not bad, that's 20. It's not a lot of food. We'll, be, we'll definitely need to build a farm right away. It's so dry here with no water. Wow. Alright, let me just move over this way. I'm not going to plop it down instantly, but... Hey, there's forestry stuff over here. Maybe we'll check that out, yeah. Nature forbids us. Mm -hmm. Pop up here first. Yeah. Boop this. I mean, the production over here is all going to be fantastic. There's some river over here. Yes, yeah, Petra tiles. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we don't know enough of the tiles over there, but the river is likely to give us some good growth. I'm definitely eager to move in this direction. What is that? Dies, okay. Hey, drops coming in. Lovely. Apparently, I just got a drop. It, it's funny, because I think that like, you, could, you could earn the drop for every beta re release they ever had, even though, like, even if you only got it in the first one, it still carried over into the, the game over here. Okay, that's looking very good. Yeah, I strongly suspect there's going to be a great site for us over here. And I do think we're probably going to want to jump on the river. There is a tech site over there, but... This way. Mm -hmm. That's not bad, because it's 20, it is food-weighted. Yeah, I think I like it. We'll just keep moving forward one step at a time, just to reveal what we might reveal along the way. But I think I'll plop it down. The sooner we get the outpost down, the sooner it can start generating food for population. World of Flame. Yes, we are going to chase, get a new unit. Because, is this guy literally in my way? Yes, he is. Because of course he's in my way. Get some. That is going to be it, because this one can't move. I don't know, I'll go here. What's over there? Uh-huh. Hit them! Okay. Done, done, done. This has got no movement, so we'll have to end here. <laughs> Great war against the deer. Oh dear, here we go again. All right, separate you out, and you... Ooh, that's even better over here. All right, I'm gonna do that. And you... Let's go for food. Even though it's probably only gonna be five food. Sustenance, security, and oh, pleasure. Ten. All right. Wonderful stuff, this simple food. Is this guy seriously going to block my way again? What is it with the animals in this game? Oh, I'm a pacifist animal. I'm not going to attack you. I'm just going to get in your way constantly. I'm in a mood to bitch today. It's going to be fun. Um, So we know there was some stuff down there. And of course over there. Although again, this guy's in the way. So maybe I'll just... Move this way. Yeah, here, we'll do that. Okay. I mean, it does suck to spread out the food like this, because then, you know, it doesn't actually grow your pop. Onwards. 
<laughs> Reach maximum salt level soon. Oh yeah. Onward. Go for this. So we're at six of ten science for the era. And two of five pop. Both of these are about to grow though. Both of my units. We move. Oh, we can be clear the sanctuary. Okay, someone's become the Harappans. Now, the Harappans are really dangerous early on, because they're the ones that get the scout, the super scout unit, right? The runners? If you run into a neighbor that's running the Harappans, you gotta prepare yourself for some some action early. So we'll burn that down, which will give us some food. And we'll burn that one down, which will give us some food. That'll bring us up to four or five population. <laughs> oh, AI always takes her up at first. It seems it seems to be that way. So, what is this? Violent pursuits. Last win. I don't know if I've seen this one. Last winter was especially harsh. The hard, the ground hard. The frost chilling to the bone. In the heart of the settlement, the tribe huddled close to share warmth through the coldest days. But for some, it wasn't enough. Some needed to get their blood flowing, and they found means through violent games, grappling, fighting, contests of strength and endurance. One contest where opponents fight with high bound fists. Oh, boxing has gained quite a following to the point where the outpost's usual foraging missions are under threat. Uh, what is your stand on this new sport? We can encourage it. So we're going to lose five food, but until we lose the, leave this era, so Wild Nomadic Tribe, although I think we're going to leave pretty soon, we'll have plus two combat strength on units. Or we could forbid it, gain Bountiful for ten turns and get more food in our outpost. That seems to be the way to do it. We could get a discount on domestication, but I think we'll forbid for the food and get the population uh, a little early on. I think that's going to be very nice. Plundered. Fooded population has grown. We only need five more food. Can we reach this deer this turn? Yeah, we can. And we should get food from that, which should give us the star we need to advance. And there's no reason to delay advancing our era out of the uh, nomadic tribe. Because we need to do that so that we can get food. Let's just instant resolution this, because that's going to work out fine. We grew. Era star unlocked. Beautiful. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, I might want to send some of these scouts back to our city to get a po an early population boost. And that's pretty tempting. On the other hand, exploring the world and having these hit squads is going to be very nice. That's one of the things. I'm still not sure where I want to balance that. Um, we can go and uh, claim a territory adjacent to what our capital will be, which will be Questionable Muffin. Um, and that will boost its productivity pretty quickly. Maybe what I'll do... I'm going to separate. Send you that way. It's going to be one of the territories that is adjacent. And there's no resources in here. There are some here. Well, that's not bad. It's worth 20. 21. I think we'll plan to build an outpost over here. This is... Oh, wait, no, that's not adjacent. I, for some reason, I think because of the rivers, I sort of read these borders wrong. I thought this snaked up this way to be adjacent, but it is not. Uh, you know what? We'll probably want to grab over there, which will be easier taking a, a unit from that army. So maybe what I'll do is I'll leave these two together so we can keep sniping animals. So, the reason the Harappans are scary is because, oops, they get these runners, which just replaces their scouts. So these runners are just flat out better than the scouts. They have a little bit more strength, they move faster, and they, they ignore movement penalties in forests, which are really good. So they're great for exploring, they're great for claiming tons of territory, and they're great for getting in their early wars. So that's why the AI t tends to grab it first. If uh, the Harappans do settle right next to you, um, what has an early decent unit? The Hittites tend to be pretty strong and then you get your waris you get the plus one combat strength i think that's one of the things you can sort of counter if you're worried, worried about getting booped um oh i like the assyrians as well the problem is we don't have we don't have horses we don't have copper so if we want a, a, a sieve that's got um a military unit we can use our options i think are basically the egyptians oh no you need horses for that Okay, there's the Mycenaeans. The thing is, I don't know if I'm in love with the rest of their abilities. At all. 
These archers don't need units, and the, the Zhu are always amazingly good. Now, the Zhu do need copper, uh, copper and horses, but they're amazingly good. This The stability boost is fantastic for the entire game, and Confucian schools are great because they give you science early, because you don't have access to research outposts until the classical era research quarters so being able to build the early confucian schools really gives you a tech boost early on so i do like these guys uh, phoenicians i mean we're not coastal i mean technically we're not that far from the coast but meh we're, that, that's not going to be relevant um the olmecs do get the javelin throwers which are cool i don't know it's it's hard to argue with the I, I don't know if we've done a start as the olmecs maybe we should do that just on the basis that we haven't done it um, and the javelin throwers are actually pretty decent. Let's just do this. And do the Jew. The thing is, I think the Jew are much stronger. I really like the Egyptians. If you've got horses, which are usually not hard to get, I think the Egyptians are going to be extremely popular for me. The art Markabatas are insanely strong. The pyramids are great for the, everyone. Wants, well, it's a little split. But there they seem to be more support, support for the Jew. So we'll do that. I mean, we're probably not going to use their unique unit, but the Confucian schools are insane. Done. Done. Okay. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. I haven't seen this yet either. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of Thanks for the animals, gift subs, uh, Triptykin. You can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets. And markets begin the exchange of goods. Too, I no, if you can grab the Harappans. Most important. I would say the only reason not to grab the Harappans is maybe if you ha if you don't have any immediate Perhaps neighbors. You really need to focus on markets. On the other hand, the runners are still good for claiming territory. And dangerous chariots. All right. So we are going to be able to make our city. So we will be naming cities after viewers, but our first city is going to be called Questionable Muffin. Because that is going to be the name of this series over here. So the capital is Questionable Muffin. Because reasons. Uh, I'm going to detach the injured scout. And your job is going to be to claim some tiles over here. 22. I'm just assuming the river tiles are going to be... It's interesting that it's not actually highlighting any of these, because they all seem pretty good. There's 22 in perfect balance. I think it's, it's, it's about the same. This will take three turns to grow. This will only take two turns to grow. So I'll do this one. Because we'll be able to attach it faster, assuming we have the stability. Which we'll see. So what would make a muffin questionable? Maybe I'm afraid. Maybe maybe I'm regretting at putting that question out there. It's interesting that the pathfinding is not going to follow along the river. Wait. Yeah, why is... Oh, probably because there's a cliff here it can't descend. Okay. I don't mind going after this, uh, this elephant over here, this mammoth. I don't know what stars we're going to get. Um, we do get bonus uh, fame. Wait, 150? When I was playing before, I swear it was 110 for the one that was your your particular pick. Maybe it varies depending on what it is. But these were all 100, and that was 110. 150. Maybe things have changed a little bit since the uh, the press release I had. Um, that's interesting. So you do get more fame from pursuing the stars in the thing that matches your particular empire. For your families! This is a different playthrough from YouTube. I mean, first of all, we've literally just started. Um, okay, so one of the things I'd like to come up with a rule of... I want to come up with a few little simple simple rules that, you know, as a bit of a guidance. Like, for example, I judge a an outpost to be very good if it has a total of 20 production or more. Um, ideally, it's kind of balanced as possible. It's, it's like, all right, we're going to say 20 or more, that's, that's pretty good, um, is what we're looking for. In terms of early game growth, you know, numbers, food versus industry, it would be nice to come up with these sorts of just general guides where if you're sort of looking, you're like, you know what we need right now is more blah. 
Now, partially, I think a lot of times it's going to be, we're going to look at the numbers. Do we have positive food? Because we want to be growing. So that's good. And we do have positive food. The other thing I think I'm going to consider is if when I click on these districts, how good is the district placement? That's a pretty good farm because of the exploitation over there. Um, that's not a very impressive maker's quarters, which means it's going to be less in, in, in less enticing to build a maker's quarters because it's not a particular good boost right now. Maybe if we spread the, spread the city out closer to the mountains, then we get stronger maker's quarters, for example, um, like that. Of course, we've got our unique building here, the Confucian School, which isn't actually going to give us much until we get by the mountains, which should be something I strongly consider, including placement of this unit. That's true. The Confucians really, it's going to be like Civ and putting down... Um, putting down uh, campuses. We want to be next to mountains for that. The other thing is you could build a pottery workshop early on to get extra influence, which we do want extra influence because of who we are, but also it lets us claim territory. I feel like here the no-brainer solution is to go with the farm. Now, if we had a decent farm over here, it could be tempting to build here so we can get closer to the mountains for Maker's Quarters and their Confucian schools, but I think I'll go ahead and just put it down over here for maximum value, and then we'll see what comes up next. So I'm not sure that our, our capital is very well placed, given everything else we're building. I was mostly just looking at the raw numbers, but there's, there's still too many things to kind of internalize in terms of what's good. What is nice here is all the rivers. The river stuff is going to be fantastic for lots and lots of growth. But are we going to have, are we going to be missing out on anything else? Maybe. First research, I mean, we could grab calendar so that we can exploit our luxury resources over here, which do give us various benefits. You can see for every die we have hooked up, plus five extra industry. That might compensate for the fact that we don't have good market, um, good makers quarters right now. Um, it, we don't have access to horses, so I don't think I've got to rush domestication. Um, for carpentry, does give us archers, which is excellent, and the lumberyard, which will be really good for um, taking advantage of the production over here. City defense gives us warriors. I feel I like the idea of going calendar, so that we can plop down the uh, the artisan quarters. And actually, the granary is not bad either. So I think we'll do that. Farming triangles definitely exist in this game because most quarters uh, benefit from being adjacent to other copies of itself. And your emblematic districts, your unique districts, uh, usually count as one and sometimes two different quarters as well. Uh, like the... I'm not sure if the pyramids... Is there a way to see the other... Oh, show cultures. Because, um, for example... Whoops. Oh, I can't actually see all my stuff here, but I can look at the others. There we go. Um, is that going forward? That's the next era here. Oh, all I can see is the next era. Yeah, I can't see a way to cycle between the eras here. Coffins count as three different types. Ah, so I, there's something that counts as like the research quarter and the farming quarter. Ours counts as a research quarter, which will matter later on when we get uh, more research quarters because they adjacent to each other very well. All right, we're going to boop this guy. No fear. Which should be fine. Especially given the terrain, mostly. Um, I think that's a cliff, so no one's going to be able to climb up there. I might want to pull him back into Off here. We go. I don't know. No mercy! damage but that's fine Let's get up! this one's going to be really one-sided so we'll just automate that so we are doing our um oh yeah it's not killing animals here it's we have to kill actual military units we do get benefits from killing this including some early xp which is nice this uh button here the estate one is not one that i'm super keen on i mean so okay we spend money we target a territory Brings the territory back in our sphere of influence, and we gain influence for each adjacent territory already in your sphere. So this will generate extra stars for us as we have more territories. So we'll see if we convert um, money into influence. It's not a terrible thing for us to have. Now, it is going to be much cheaper for us to claim territory that's adjacent to our city, so we really do want to do that as much as possible. So I think the goal right now, I'm going to move back you back in friendly territory. We might heal you here and then move you this way. And this guy over here, I mean, yeah, I'm going to pop down this hill and see what we can see. 
Let's go. Come over here. It is not just a bunch of buildings. It is warmth, protection, and praise the yeah, gods. I'm not sure. I, I do kind of want to boost my population in here. But I also want to spot over here first. I think maybe these guys. Maybe we'll claim this and then maybe merge you back into the city or at least one of them. It's interesting, it does recommend this tile. I don't know why it wasn't recommended. Maybe it only recommends from tiles that are in your city. There are no mountain tiles in this territory, so from that point of view, it doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll detach this injured one. Rather to have it stop and heal, I'll send you into the city. And yeah, that's what I keep using as sort of a rule of thumb. If it's got 20 base stats... See, now, now all of a sudden it's not recommending any tile. I don't know why. Maybe it only recommends from things you can reach within a turn? That could be. Maybe Fog of War? That could be it too. with you. I'm gonna move over here and spot some more things, over which I guess is just gonna be move on to the river. Okay. I wish the claim drops thing didn't have my username in it so it would stop highlighting the messages. Because it makes it really hard for me to, like, spot actual, like, you know, relevant messages to me. Um... Yeah, so that's tier 20. Okay, I'll just do that. Okay. And it is adjacent to the capital, then maybe we'll still emerge in. Um, I'm going to come down here, because this is a territory that's adjacent to my city as well, and would be fairly cheap to claim. All right. As I say, I don't think I can make it anywhere up here with all these cliffs. Running around with the Singleton Scouts is a little scary. Because you could get booped by an enemy army pretty easily. Me. And it also means you can't hunt the animals. Maybe I will keep these guys merged over here. Uh, I can't claim this territory right now because I don't have enough points. You are done, so what you're going to do is you're going to move into the city territory, and we're going to go ahead and disband you. Right. Off we go. Yeah, there are mountains over here for the science district. The problem is, oh, in case it wasn't clear, I'll show you in a second. This visible finishes. mark of this new culture. I hope the style is pleasing. Because um, it will be you can't for build a district just anywhere. Lost. It has to be adjacent to the districts you've already got, including like the, your center square. So I can't just plop it over here. Um, we have to expand out in that direction. Later on, you do get a district type called a hamlet that you can put anywhere you want. Um, and it exploits everything there and then also gives you a new building site. So yeah, I can't just arbitrarily put it anywhere, which is too bad. Okay, so um, oh, what I want to do is I want to make sure this is on city growth focus early on, although this is fine. Um, I mean, we could go more food... But the industry is not bad. I could build a second farmer's quarter, which is going to be a great tile here, plus it benefits from adjacency um, with other farmer's quarters. Yeah, an extra plus one food per adjacent farmer quarters, which makes farming triangles, just like Civ, very, very appealing. Um, and that could let us, our city grow more, which is really good. I still would like an early pottery workshop just to get more influence coming in, period. Now, that's not helping us place for Confucian schools, which... Maybe the, the these guys again. Shu, Zhu, or Zhao, Zhu, isn't it? I think I keep saying Zhao, but it's more Zhu. 
Someone will chat to let me know. There'll be three different ways of saying it in chat, of course, because that's the way it's going to go. Hmm. Joe. Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe. How am I going to remember that? I can't think of a good way to remember that. It's like... It's like, eh, eh, you know, am I saying you right? No, you. No, see? I was trying to come up with these little sort of tricks to memorize things, and that's harder, Jay. Like, Jew. Jew? Joe, Joe, Joe. Like, Joe Biden. Like, it's just Joe. We're a bunch of Joes. Cup of Joe. I think I'm always going to forget. Because it doesn't look like it should be that. You know what I mean? It doesn't look it. Whoever uh, transliterate, transliterated it or romanticized it, I did it a shit job. Why is there a U in that word? Doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, see, I'm very torn. I mean, it's hard to argue with more growth. More population, you know, you can work more of these things, you get more output on everything. Our farmer's quarters are really good over here. Um, there are stars to be gotten for population. Well, I might just build the farmer's quarters. And, ugh, it doesn't even tell you the preview of the numbers if you don't have the uh, influence. Which, I mean, might be less confusing for people. Now, if we claim this territory... Let me pull back over here. If we claim this territory and attach it to our city first, this is going to be a great place for a Confucian school. You can only have one emblematic district uh, per territory. Okay, we can claim this area as well, too, because it is adjacent. Oh, hello. Oh, I have to go downhill to catch that. Long way away, actually. It's and I want to pop everything in here to get a good idea of what's what. You there are going to disband and join the city. Giving us extra population over here. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Sounds Chinese often halfway between the European South. I guess that's it. So it's probably not actually Joe. It's Joe or something like that. And, you know, people try to fake as well as they can. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We always can chalk on Loon Call. Hey, Loon Call, thank you very much. You're too compelling, entertaining. Really should be studying right now. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much. But yeah, study. You can just listen in the background while you study. It's going to be fine. Okay, we got our second farmer's quarters over here. I don't think I'm going to keep slap... Oh, wait, no. I didn't actually start them. That's right, because I got interrupted and confused about things. I do want to build the second farmer's quarters, and then we might stop there. Although, if I do build the third, we do get the nice triangle, which is pretty sexy. Um, I do think what we're going to do is we're going to expand over here. Um, so that's a total of 18. Weighted towards production, which isn't bad since we are building so many farms. There's a 20 over here, a 19. Now, I would like to... So this isn't bad, because if I claim this, we've got a lot of spots where I can build adjacent to a mountain. Which, I, you, again, I only need one spot to build the one Confucian school in this district. So if I grab this, I could build a Confucian school, say, there, maybe. Seems okay. That's a good one! The pronunciation of Joe, Joe confuses the average Joe. Thank you, Charlie's Dragon. I will try to remember that one. It confuses the average Joe. I will try to remember that. That was really good. Greetings to the Nubians. Now there's some good fortune. A neighbor... Hey, Marmor's here. How's it going, man? You would all benefit from growing closer. Don't you think? They finally have his voice in! And yet... I'm so happy! I recognize my visitor's voice! He's a great guy. I met him tons of times at various events. We, we always have a great time. Uh, he is lovely. Oh, and until now, his voice wasn't in. It was still a generic one. Yes! Excellent stuff. Of course I'll trade with you, Marbs! Your proposal makes good sense. I say yes. That's going to be an issue in this game. Excellent. This will be remembered. I'm going to treat these people based on like... It's like, how could I ever turn on Marbazir? Now that his voice is in here, I had no problem before, but now I'm going to feel bad attacking him when I inevitably do. Since we're actually neighbors, that's 100% going to happen. What are they? Nubians, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. I really wish you could see the... I mean, we can sort of eyeball and try to figure out the output. 
which isn't going to be huge there. I think I am going to come around this way and see what we can see. He's going to backstab you. You're going to be so selfie. <laughs> well, I'm just going to send him like hate mail on Twitter. Like, Marbazir, how could you? Oh, I thought we were friends, man. Come over here. I might have to attack this unit. They're coming right for us. Charge! Oh. Where are you heading to? Damn simultaneous turns. <laughs> Bloody and smelly, aren't they? History may be changed by battles, but that doesn't mean that. Oh shit, enjoyable. I shouldn't have instanted. I was sure it was going to be 100% fine. Oh, I was lazy and lost an extra unit. That's like it's two to one. It's on flat terrain. It's going to be very straightforward. There's no way the AI is going to screw this one. Oh, shit. Uh, so attaching this territory is going to be something we're going to want to do probably fairly soon. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to head back and probably join with this guy. And maybe join with this guy. Wow, we took a ton of damage this one, too. Does he have a combat boosting trait? There must have been something going on. Yeah, so we're going to merge our three scouts together. Yes, sir. And just keep an eye on his units and, you know, generally be a jerk. Understood. Hey, he started it when he was vaguely near my army. <laughs> he had it coming! He had it coming. He had it coming. I'm actually not really a fan of Chicago. But that one is a pretty catchy tune. Are oh, you out of movement? You're both out of movement. Okay. Um, new civic available. So we could spend 10 in... Yeah, we should. I mean, the turnaround time is super fast. In two turns, this will pay for itself. So we're going to do this for more influence. Why was this even a question? Exactly, right? Let's Why is it even it a question? We've been here. The other thing is create outpost cost minus 50% is really nice. Now, I mean, we're going to be attaching some things soon, but I think this is going to save us a bunch of points. I might wait just because I really do want to attach um, Peacock to Questionable Muffin, which is going to cost us 30. And we can do that next turn. I think it's going to be really good for us if we do that. Um, where do we get our unique unit? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, which I can't I can't actually build. That's not why we took this empire. I'm gonna grab carpentry then so I can make some archers. Is it the hand of faith narrator? I don't know actually. Yeah, so you just keep healing for now. Oh shit! Hit the end turn button by reflex. Lost an entire goddamn turn of production over here. Alright, attach the questionable muffin. Thank you. And, yeah, we can get some great... Oh, yeah, it's adjacent to two mountains. Of course. Actually, I didn't realize it was plus five per mountain. I thought it was just plus five if it was adjacent to a mountain. So that's really quite good. That's actually going to be a stupid amount of science. For the record, our science per turn right now is 4.2, right? And we're about to add 11 science per turn. We're going to triple... Nearly. Our science output. It's nuts. So we're going to do that. I mean, we could build here as well. It's all both the same. I don't think in the end it's going to matter where we go with this one. Mm -hmm. Well, if we could... Okay, you're right. If we built something here first. If I drop a maker's quarter down here first. Because I can't build it now. Right? Has to be... It, if we build a maker's quarters first, which is a pretty decent maker's quarters with all the uh, mountains, then we can build a stupid good Confucian school. And it would be nice if it did give you the preview here. Yeah, all right. Let's do that. And that's going to be our science for, like, the first two ages. Just sorted. Oh, we still have tons of info. Oh, yeah, because I did skip the turn. Now it's another turn. Now, I can't attach another one because the cost goes up with everyone we attach. Now, these terrain over here haven't been claimed yet. So we're going to go and do that. Before that, that dirty, filthy Marbazir. I love you, Marbs. Uh, claims it. Now you need 40. So, I mean, we'll move up here. So, it gives us more options. It did it again. I wish it gave us the pop up so I could at least, like, pre move in the right area. I admitted that, yes, that's a very good one with 23, but that's not where I am there, game. 
I am sort of surprised. Like, when you go to place a district, it highlights the best spot, or two, if they're, if they're tied, um, the best spot in each territory that you can build, like, your district. Um, and I'm sort of surprised it doesn't sort of calculate, well, which one has the best output in every territory. So admittedly, this is only 18 total instead of 20. But maybe that's something they can change. Whoop, 19 over here. Heavy on the food. It'll take a while for the outpost to be established, but that's not bad. What's nice about this one as well is it's tighter into our territory, so it'll be a little bit more protected. There's a 19 on the river. Oh, yeah, right here. A 19, 19. Uh, I do like this spot better with the slightly higher production. Alright, we're going to found that one. And then the question becomes, when do you get your second city? Which costs 160 or 180 uh, influence? We'll see. Do we want polytheism or shamanism? We went, You know what? Okay, on the last stream, we went poly. But on the YouTube series, we went shamanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The civic discount. Um... Yeah, maybe first. Yeah, we'll get it for the next one. Or we'll get the attaching one. River tiles to become good. The thing is, you don't have to put your outpost on the river, right? I mean, you can, but yeah. Uh, more votes for shamanism right now. Let's do it. Okay, done. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to remember to grab the civic before we grab this one over here. Okay, so grab the civic now. Because the cost for civics does go up per civic you have as well. Yeah, we'll take the cheaper outposts. That seems to leave a lot of interpretation of right and wrong. Not to mention yours and mine. So, that's decent. I mean, so it's highlighting it because it's a it's a fairly high number. So, most likely it's, you know, about as high as we're going to get. 22. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Um, I also like it because, again, it's fairly close to our borders and away from the enemy. And technically, if we go and attach a city to it, we can put a Confucian school here. On the other hand, like if we wrapped around the bottom and put it there, maybe we could get a double, but I think I like this just fine. So let's do that. We'll also have to decide what we call a religion later. The pecking of poultry. Oh, I haven't seen this one before. I don't think. The art of divinations. Oh, that kind of pecking. Spreads across the empire. Priests search for messages from the gods and enemy and animal entrails, the flights of birds, the wheeling of the stars, and holy dog. Decoction? What's a decoction? I feel like maybe we did see this once, and I was confused about this one. So, like, I know what a concoction is. And elsewhere. Now, however, the practice has become so commonplace, so bizarre, that the entire, the whole empire is sliding towards chaotic superstition. Even the eating of patterns of chickens are being interpreted by military commanders. What to do? Deto so, detoction, decoction is like a concoction. Because concoction is a potion, to me. Decoction is the same? It's what the Witcher uses to kill monsters. Oh, I've never played the Witcher, so I'm not as familiar with that word, I guess. All right, it's like how flammable and inflammable mean the same thing. Gotcha. Okay, so we can embrace uh, the the chicken pecking for a stability boost, which I don't think we need right now in our capital. We could get a faith boost, or we could get a science boost, which I think I like the idea of. Moves us towards progress as well. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say, to refuse that over here. De decoction is a liquid concentrated through heating. Okay. Process of boiling usually in water so it's extract the flavor. Compare infusion sends one. Okay. Okay. So there is a bit of slight difference, but not so much for our purposes here. Basically, of just understanding the basic what it means. I've got some money. I don't think I want to spend it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've loaded The Witcher. I've dabbled. I played like maybe an hour. Yeah, I know. It's, it's in the list of things I really, really, really need to do. Me. I played longer than that. I might have played like three hours of Witcher. Of Witcher 1, I think. Okay, well, this guy's in my way, so obviously he has to go. I'm gonna be lazy and hit the instant button. Better not kill one of my units, game. Alright, so we can build our first religious spot, but we should now be able to build a Confucian school over here for 21 freaking science. Yeah, let's do that without any delay. Thank you. How's your stability over here? Oh, it's gorgeous. All right. Boom. Hey, we've converted to a new religion. Carpentry researched. I want to pop this. 
Well, that's true. Um, so... So I'm going to convert this to my culture, which doesn't really matter. The question is, is this going to give me influence? Four territories in your empire's sphere of influence. Oh, yeah. Now, it did say for connected ones, so maybe I should have just done this one for more stars. On the other hand, this makes sure our culture gets pushed pretty quickly for whatever that might be worth, which there is some value to that. Is there, is there no cooldown to this? Okay, no, 10 turns. Okay, I should have done that sooner, actually. That's cool. I've never used that one. <gasps> We've got copper. It's even an adjacent province. If we had horses, which unfortunately we don't, we could actually build our unique unit. Copper mountains. Oh. I mean, that's a lot of production, not a lot of food. Okay. Um... It's a unique unit, but you can't do anything with it. Roads between cities and outposts actually is pretty valuable. On the other hand, I think what we do is grab irrigation. Flood irrigation is really good, and we're going to want the, the fountains as well. So I think we're going to go with irrigation right now. Yeah, right now we do have a trade deal for... Actually, that's the other thing I can do with money. Um, oh, tell me. How are you today? Yeah, sorry. It's whiskey that. and chocolate. Um... I can trade for some luxuries. That's something I can spend my money on. For each die, we get more industry in all cities. You have created your first trade. Yeah, that's really, really, really good for us. We got whiskey and chocolate from Crincy. Hey, Crincy. Just hit my eight year YouTube subver subscriber anniversary with you. Wow. Wow. Uh, love all you do and thank you for all the years of entertainment. Random question Have you ever seen the Turbo Encabulator video from the 1970s? Not, it's worth the minute and 20 second watch. Hang on. Turbo encabulator. Yes, I think I did. This is like the fake gadget thing or something, isn't it? Fictional machine, techno babble description is so Yes, I have seen that video. It's amazing. I haven't seen it in, year, in years. Thank you for reminding me about it. If I remember after the stream, I like tweet it so that everyone can see because it is very funny. Um, all right, let me step forward to Scooch. Damn it, Marbazir. Wait, how? What do you have in here? Just scouts, but your scouts have a 14 strength. Is there somewhere? Okay, so again, if I go here, if I hit cultures, how do I find out what the Nubians do when I'm in game? Encyclopedia? Hey, there's something else I wasn't allowed to show before. How come his scouts have such a better strength? He must have some sort of event triggering right now. Well, you know what keeps... No. I keep forgetting scouts have a 13 strength. For some reason, I think they have an 11. So he's got... He's just got plus one because of vampire difficulty. I keep thinking scouts have an 11. And so I'm like, how do you have three more? That's why. So that's fine. Plus one is perfectly reasonable. Well, I think I will just found here. Definitely getting it established like instantly. Better see stars on our troops? No, and I think it would show up in the portraits over here if they did. Alright. I think we do want to do this because when we I think when we build our religious site, when we build our stone circle, this is gonna give us 30% discount on that, right? And I think I've claimed all the cheap districts. 
On the other hand, doing another attaching, attaching one more district here would be wonderful. If I had more money, I'd buy that right now. Oh, no, we do have one more adjacent district we can claim over here. Oh, yeah. That's actually a city border, so I can't enter it without declaring war. Oh, Currency, thank you again. Follow-up. I asked about the encabulator uh, video because I just got promoted to train to a trainer role for Apple Retail. I'm now making training videos and feel like all the gibberish I'm saying make me look like the encabulator dude. <laughs> or Quilly Dean, I can't decide. That is fun. I really do like random techno babble. Okay, link territory city due to city cap. What are the advantages of city over attached city? Okay, so it's a great question because it's related uh, a couple of days before the release as well. Someone asked like how viable to save one city challenge and things like that. So the thing is, every time you attach a district or a territory to a city, the cost to attach goes up quite a bit. So very quickly, it becomes kind of prohibitive to continue to attach new districts. Whereas if you found a new city, you can attach a bunch of districts to that new city very cheaply. So that tends to be it. I tend to find that three can often be kind of a sweet spot because the third one is going to cost me, what was it, 80? Yeah, 80. The next one, I think, I think it do it'll double to 160 or so, which is the same price, I think, to make our second city. So... You're, you're sort of balancing some of those costs. And there's also stability, that is true. Um, for every every territory you attach to the city, you do take a, um, a stability hit for that. Um, so making a, a city with tons and tons of territory is very unstable. So making multiple cities will help resolve that. Oh, I thought he was gonna go plunder. You know what? He's clearly still thinking about it. This Marb is your guy, you know? Alright, we're going to manual battle because I don't trust this. Yeah, uh, this placement is going to be the Suxors. Off we go. We're really gonna take more damage here. Oh, he's, he's got defending mode already on. Still, I could whack him with all three. You see this, like, he's two points stronger than us. We're gonna take substantially more damage. Well, this guy's not on river. My unit here is not on river. This guy is. Um, I think what I'll do is not attack here. I'll let him attack one of my defenders. We've got the flag too, so he's really gonna be forced to attack and retake the flag. So you take a lot more damage because we had the plus two from the defense instead of him. And now he doesn't have the defense, so we're on even footing. He's already damaged, but not enough to take a combat penalty. I don't know what the um, the values are for that. And then here we're going to attack and take... Actually, shoot. I should have... Well, let's say I could have moved here. You know what? I think I can legally move here. Come over here. Which normally the zone of control would stop that, but I think because I have a unit here, I could walk through it, and then I no longer have to attack across the river. And there we go. We get a clean win. Beautiful. Yeah, these con this other confusion school is really not going to be very sexy. The artisan quarter is going to be really good. We know the dies give us quite a bit of benefit. So it's a little bit weird because here it says that all we get is plus one food, plus one money, and plus two stability. But that's a little bit misleading because actually with the dies, how do I get the, there. Um, okay, it might not be for every die. This one might just be if you have a die, you get this bonus. Because some of them do specifically say for each. Die does not. See, for porcelain, it says you get this bonus per porcelain. This one does stack. So why is porcelain flavored differently than the dye? Why is it why is it written differently? This is stability per porcelain in all cities. Money da 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 da. I wonder if it might just be an inconsistent tooltip. We'll confirm. Tell you what, we're gonna hook up the dye. So right now, 
if we look at our production so we do have we do have a die over here if we look at our industry okay we have a plus five industry from luxury resources so for the purpose of science and yeah having more of it means we can sell more of it for the purpose of science we're gonna hook up another one and we're gonna see if that bonus says it goes to plus 10 which we're hoping it does so that would actually be quite cool because the artisan quarters don't lower stability and anything like that um oh speaking of i have or not stability but i can attach and I think I will. I think I'm going to attach Gloss to Questionable Muffin so that we can... We need the tech for it, but it will give us the ability to exploit Copper. Um, although we still need horses for a unique. Um, unless I wanted to grab something else, but I don't think so. I think I'm okay with this. Kind of die as a D20, D4. I don't know. All I can tell you is that it's a good day to die. No regrets! So yeah, now we're getting minus 40 stability, so it's 20 stability per territory. But we're going to get the production boost of this tile, which was very productive. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go and claim this territory, because it'll still be cheap, because it's adjacent to a city. I accidentally walked through the curiosity, completing irrigation. That's very nice. Okay. Oh, hold on. So, tell me, how are you today? I'm great, Marbs. Thanks. There's a little dot, dot, dot. I think implying, I think that may have been because a relationship changed. I mean, he's getting pretty salty at me. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> um, oh, can I use this yet? No, five more turns. God, never going to remember that. Okay, so we finished this. Let's see. We are getting plus 10. So it is stacking every die as we had hoped. So I think there's no reason to not to continue just plopping this down. The only difference is it doesn't actually give us any stars towards any of our goals, but... It's pretty good. The other thing we could do is get a stone ring down as soon as possible so that we can get more faith for our religion spread. That's very good. Um, and then these infrastructure buildings are fantastic as well. So like plus two food on all tiles on rivers is very, very, very good. Granary is plus two food per farmer. We have three farmers. This granary would give us six food, which is exactly the same as we're getting per farmer right now. So it's the same as getting an extra farmer. On the other hand, we could build a farmer's quarters. These plus six right now, but they're going to be on rivers, so they'll stack with things. So, yeah. Oh, wait. Are you serious? The artisan quarters does count as a district. I guess it is a district. I don't know why I was thinking it wasn't. Anyway, I think we will build it because it doesn't give us the stability hit. Not that I'm worried about stability. It might open up trading possibilities. We shall see. Um. Yeah, that's a unique unit, but we still don't have horses. Mar well, hang on. Let's see. Does Marvazir have horses? I know we can't trade it yet. They do not. Because we could have proposed a trade everything treaty. But he doesn't. I'm wondering about grabbing warriors so that I can make armies that are like two warriors, two archers, something like that. Yeah, all the rivers text will be really good in the capital. Once the ter territory gets like used, then like the, the things that give bonus food and the things that give bonus production on rivers don't really stack. But they're still pretty nice. I mean, I guess there's no reason not to grab city defense. It's only one turn. It does give it the, the access to warriors might shake things up a little bit. Uh, and then there is the idea of like getting masonry so we can get the stoneworks down for the production boost. Oh. All right. Curiosity. I mean, these are all gonna be really low food. The point where, even though this is 17, the fact that it's got a little bit more food might make it more valid. And that's a 20, which is good. I mean, looks like plus 5 food is as much as we can get. But, or no, we can get a plus 8 over here, but it's only a total of 12, and that's not very sexy. It will, no matter what, it will get a lot of production to our city. That is true. So maybe we'll just do this. It'll be fine. Our city is going to build a lot of farming quarters. Well, we this might get attached to a different city. 
Like, it looks like, well, there's not a lot of territory left over here. So it's unlikely that we'll find a better spot. I think I'll just go for this one. Uh, we, another Confucianist school over here. I mean, if I built it up here, that, that would be an idea. Because if I built it up here... So let's say here. There's only 19. It's only one food less than there. But it would let us build a Confucian school, I mean, next to a mountain right away. Um, the other thing, though, is this territory over here that we've just grabbed. I don't know. If I... Okay, if I settle here, I build a Confucian school here. Can I build one here? It's not adjacent to this administrative center, but it is adjacent to something else. I actually don't know. The thing is, if I build it here, I can just build a maker's quarters here, which is going to be very good, and then we can Confucian later on. You can? Yeah, if they're the same city. So the question is, are we going to attach this district to the same city? And we may. Which It doesn't really matter which of these two I settle, necessarily, because we can expand in that direction one way or the other. But maybe I'll expand here. Now, attaching this is going to be expensive, but it might be what we end up doing. Melody for every occasion. Right. Muster every musician. We'll get some money. Or we could build... Oh, yeah, build the institution. I want to do that. I want to spend the money, which I have a bunch of. We'll get overproductive. And then, yeah, we'll build an institution of music, which seems like a great idea. Moves us towards... Um, well, this actually moves us towards... Oh, yeah, it is progression. Place the rest. How do you count those 23 resources so fast? Did you just notice when I was mousing over? Or are you literally counting the tiles and doing the math? Well, we'll grab bronze working, because we do actually have bronze. It will allow us to build spearmen, which, maybe. There'll be quite a bit of territory left in the south, just to say. In this territory? I don't think that... I mean, there's a bunch more territory in general, yeah. Um, but in terms of space in this territory, I'm not sure. Uh, so Marbazir just bought our access to our dyes. Which does not cost us any dies. We don't lose anything. Just get some free money. Well, free. Alright, let me send you this way. The question will be... Over this way. Bunch more money. Cool down on this. Three turns. Let's go! More Follow copper. Me. Still no horses. Where the, um... What's that this one? You have stability and money. I'm actually thinking I might just pop out a couple archers here. In case the marbles even start or something, but maybe we're okay currently. Well, I guess we may as well get this down. Um, on the other hand, if I build a a quarter a district here, and then I can get a better Confucian school there, I suspect the makers is the thing to do over here. Yeah, if I makers here, and Confucian here next to three. I think that's three mountains. Yeah, it looks like three. I think we're gonna do this. Horse, a horse kingdom for my horse. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Let's go. That's a little oasis. Very pretty. I don't think I've uh, really played in a deserty area before. Volunteers. What I like is that the fresh unit starts with full movement, too. Oh, we got some orange people down here. So claiming over here is going to be much more expensive. That's ah, only 40. Oh, it is adjacent to the city over here. Wow, never mind. That is pretty cheap. I don't think... I mean, we'll claim here. Unless I just want to attach quickly. Oh, man, that's an interesting question. Okay, how much is this going to cost? 230. See, that's really expensive.
Well, you know what? Yeah, I'm not as obsessed about putting the Confucian School here, because I'm putting it over here for this territory, which is going to be just as good, so that's going to be fine. So, I think we will we will grab this territory over here, and then plan on maybe building a city somewhere down here. Maybe Ran becomes the city. That way it's, you know, far from the border, but then we attach these two. And food is going to be a bit of a problem, though, with that. Um, hmm. Hmm. But I, I do want to claim this territory. I'd rather the outpost not be too close to the border over here. So, looks like maybe the 17 might be the best. But the problem here will definitely be food. These oases are interesting, though, and they've got quite a lot of food. Off we go. Melody, for every occasion. You and me. Hooray! Let's go. A couple of unknown resources. So, the thing is, we can get more total over here. We can get a 15 over there. But what I might want for the first... Like, if this is... If we're going to found a city from here, we might just want to wait a little higher towards the food as a kickstart. So, it's only 13 production, but it's more food. This is 13, but even more food. Although, you know, if the production's too low... What we can do is, right, we can, we can plant it here and then immediately attach, say, Ran to it. Um, and we'll get tons of production from Ran. Although, claiming this territory is pricier. Eh, 70 is not so bad. It's not adjacent to a city. Alternatively, what I could do is I could make Ran into a city and just attach this fairly quickly. Which might be the better play. Over this way. You prefer to be blue? I had you as orange in my game. Um, I think blue might just be the default color in here. I think I often play as blue in some of the computer games, although when I play a board game, I usually pick green as my color. Mostly because I found that green was generally uncontested, so I could usually just be green and then I could always, you know, think of myself as the same color in games. Uh, in board games. I get confused by which token I am if I'm not green. So, I don't know. Blue's pretty good, though. Yeah, Ran would be a lot easier to defend. Plus, we can make some Flock of Seagulls jokes. So, I think we do want Ran to be the city. In which case, maybe I, I hold off to claim this until I pop Ran, and then I can claim it for cheaper, and then do a quick attachment. Which I think I kind of like the idea of. The other thing we can do to buff the population of Ran is just be ready to um, disband our scouts. The scouts have decent movement, but you know their their time is definitely past. They're impressive, the Egyptians. It's a fair bet that you'll be embarrassed if you compare cities with them. You don't have anything to say there, Lumaria? Um, yeah, we'll take a we'll take a treaty right away. You are as just as you are wise. Let's make it so. Make it so. Off we go. Ooh, there's a, an aggressive lair over there. It's gonna spawn bears. Yeah, the foresty area um, for Ran. Is where? There's not a foresty area adjacent to Ran, is there? Well, oh, there. I mean, that's... We're gonna have to chain through Al Safina and then through here. But yeah, it might be it might be really good. Need 160. A couple more turns. We'll keep an eye on. Okay, so we only have one Confucian school. We can, oh no, I didn't actually build there. I did the Banker's Quarters. Zero turns for domestication. Okay. 
Uh, we want organized warfare, like, before things get too far, because we want to be able to use reinforcements. It doesn't matter quite yet. You know what? I'm gonna send both these guys over here. Follow me. Thank you for the aesthetic time. I did overshoot by a turn here. Um. So, as far as I understand this... No. Go away. Gain influence for each adjacent territory already in your sphere. So, in a sense, like, I could just gain more stars if I just pop over here. As far as I know, it doesn't forbid me from doing that. So should I just click on the middle one for maximum stars? Let's try it for science. We didn't get very much. I don't know if it made much of a difference. So it's okay they claim that because you know what we can do? Is we can um, unclaim that. Oh, I think he's got Come a unit standing here. in there. No fear! It's all going to be from a river, which is pretty shitty. Okay, you know what I can do? I can do this, and then this, to gain access to the flag. Which is a fun trick. Being able to walk through your unit to ignore the zone of combat temp or zone of control temporarily is really great. He's on defend, so we want to attack, especially from the river, which is going to be a penalty. But we'll go on defend. He's got to take back his flag. He's got no choice. So, and we don't want to attack because the stats suck. We know he's forced to attack us. And what I can do is I can flip these units around um, by doing this, that. Oh, shit. And then I can't move you back, which means I lose the adjacency bonus. There you go. Victory. We didn't kill his unit, but we forced it away. We're not going to start ripping this apart yet, but... Uh, angry old man, thank you very much. <laughs> Watched you for a long time, now caught you live. Thanks for the entertainment and uh, and all I've learned. Which it was more. Well, thank you very much. It's really appreciated. Just happy you're here. Where'd it go? They did a retreat, so it, it fucked off somewhere into the fog of war. I don't actually know where it went. Um, I could ask for grievances. How you keeping, Chief? Over here. You attack me. You, you know, owe me some stuff. But... I don't think I want to do anything that might lead to warfare right now because they've actually got like some units going on and all I'm doing is rocking my scouts. Um, I can turn around into a city. I know I'm going to want to claim this, but I guess it's going to take it's going to take a little bit before I can ransack it and rebuild it. So I think I can go ahead and turn Ran into a city now. Rename the city after a viewer. And do a draw from the hashtag name command. And this city is going to be uh, Brains and Planes. Although it said Westerburglar for a sec. So one must be um, your actual account name versus your display name. So I don't know what you prefer. But right now it's saying Brains and Planes. So Brains and Planes. Welcome. We're going to have the weirdest cities but at least they'll be easy to notice. Um, so yeah, the problem here is apocalyptically low food um, and really bad potential for farmer's quarters, at least until we attach some things down here. 
So for now, I think we might just go for the Confusion School, especially before the era changes. Wait. Why is it only saying plus one science? When the tooltip certainly implies more than plus one. <gasps> because this mountain... Adjacencies don't cross city borders? Huh. Huh. That's interesting, because in Civ, it does. Which is a neat trick you've got to be aware of, right? If, um, if there's a mine across the border from you, you can put an industrial zone next to it and you get the adjacency bonus. Now, what can happen here is I could decide to detach this territory over here, detach it from our capital of Questionable Muffin, and then I can attach it to uh, Brains and Plains. It's free to detach. It does will cost us influence to reattach, but it's not going to be that expensive. Um, and that might help us out tremendously over here. I think that's going to be okay. We can combine cities later on too, that's true. But what we could do is we could flip this. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to build a Confucian School anyway before we lose this era. It's not going to do much for us right now. But we're going to try to remember to do something to fix this at some point. Because when we change eras, we're going to lose um, the ability to build Confucian Schools. So I'm going to put this to the torch. And we absolutely want to claim this terrain. Oh, we need more influence for that. Oh, shoot. Okay, and then it disappeared. Then it go I guess it went back into the fog. Uh, we'll have enough to claim next turn, though. Game of Prophecy. Lose science. Honestly, our science rate is probably crazy. But actually, we don't need stability in Questionable Muffin. We'll just overlook that. I can't retreat here, so unfortunately, this unit is going to die here. I mean, at least we've got a decent defensive terrain. We can, like, cause them some pain. But barely. Really nothing we can do. Oh, if I, I could let him take the flag, that's true. I'm sorry, wait, what happened? Why, why is our unit still alive? I mean, their combat didn't time out. It doesn't happen. Okay, so they feel about us different. They're now if suspicious. The greater God, then I would like to know you better. I can't imagine why Marmazir might be suspicious of me. How are you keeping, Chief? Yeah, you keep attacking me. But we're gonna need some troops here. I think we do need to get on a on a military building thing here in a scooch. Especially if we keep being sort of, uh, aggressive. Slightly aggressive. So let me build here, that way we don't have to worry about any adjacencies. Yeah, but you keep the flight- the, th the thing is, combat can go multiple combat turns. Right? Even if it doesn't end in three turns. Or maybe there's something different about- Maybe there's- it's, there's a difference with overland combat? It goes three turns and, then, and it continues the next um, game turn, but maybe it only continues in, in in a siege. I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, pop out a couple archers. Depends on era. Oh, so I hadn't encountered that before. All right, now you're gonna come over here because you're gonna merge into brains and planes. Over 
put you in here, and I think I'm going to disband you. Even though we do have some territory we'd like to claim in a few places. I think our influence is going to be spent on attaching for a little bit. So we'll disband you. So you'll join the city. And then we'll convert you to something else. I think it's also amount of units. Uh... Oh, if you're at war, it continues. If it's a skirmish, it doesn't. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Signed to star. Okay, let's take a look at our star situation and figure out where we might want to go. Um, we're going to get our first Estite star fairly soon. We weren't generating as many stars as we'd like. That's the one thing I find early on, it can be a little hard to generate enough stars to get a bunch of these Estite things, unfortunately. On the other hand, we're burning through the science one. And the thing is, the first star is worth a little fame. The next one's worth more than more than more. Also, you see these rewards have gone down. They used to be worth 100, now they've gone down. I don't know what that's based on. Is it based on other people getting the stars? Is it based on how many stars we've gotten? That I'm not sure about. But the amount of stars we would or the amount of fame we would have gotten from the first um, expansion of star was going to be 100 early on. Now it's only 63. So that I don't know what determines that mechanic. Hmm. How early in the era would kind of make some sense, yeah. You're definitely rewarded, uh, it seems, if you get stars early. You're also rewarded if you go deeper into the stars on a particular topic. If we can get three more texts, which actually I think is fair, fairly likely, um, we'll get quite a bit of fame from completing the scientist stars. We might run into a problem here where we do run out of tech to research. Oh, I didn't actually have to run all the way back through this disband. Oh, no, wait, hold on, these are... These are actual warriors. One thing is, I don't think this attach button exists when you're in the city. Seems a little odd to me. All right, this is not connected yet, so we're going to wait. We could attack uh, attach Alsafina but I really want to do Kuma, although it is going to take a long time because it's such a low production tile. Maybe I could attach this one now. Well, we know we're going to need some to attach here. Let me just wait. How many turns we got over here? Six turns. Is this just an opinion? A major event requires oh, your attention. Dynamite. How are you today? Oh, you claimed a, a territory on my border. Okay, I'm going to want to hit this button, but let me get a few more units before I do. we got six turns before that time's out. Let's get the pottery grant. I don't think this territory is going to have such a bad time. The darkest depths. Miners are digging deeply and greedily. A freaky bear. Um, we can get forced labor for a bunch more industry on our capital. The stability hit doesn't matter. We can get a stability boost, which doesn't matter. We can get cheaper units. 20% cheaper units versus 14 extra industry. I don't think the units are that expensive right now. Either way, we produce a, an archer every turn. And I don't know how many we're going to produce, and this does last for 10 turns. It might be better to do Dismiss. <clears throat> Any chance? I mean, I know we're not super getting along. Do you have horses? You must. Oh, can we not see them until the trade's available? No, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, because we can see that he has horses. Does she really not have any resources whatsoever? Huh. I'm assuming the answer is going to be no. Oh, this is actually literally grayed out. We must resolve the demands first. Yeah. No, we're going to be... Well, actually, this is probably the demand for this territory, which we're currently burning down, so it might be fine. Uh, 
Dr. Thirsteed Star. Mycenaeans reach the culture classical air with Huns. I'm not sure if Ancient. Ancient. Okay. How many more turns before this burns down? Just the one. Okay. Division by zero? What? Zero? What a crazy idea! How can you have a number like zero? Um, overproductive gives us industry, prosperous gives us money, bountiful gives us food. I want to go with food. The Nubians have kept theirs, so that's... Is there some reason you weren't my time, let alone trust? He's kind of pissed at me. Um, feeling condescending. Uh, we are less powerful than them yet, but we're currently building some units, so I think it'll be okay. So they've been to the next era, but they didn't actually change what their, um, their culture is. They've got active demands over here, which we're going to be refusing. So wait, do my grievances go away? Oh, maybe... The gr yeah, because this was the territory that they were grieving over. Twenty-one. The thing is that they built here is probably a pretty good tile. And I'll be able to move it next turn. Off we go. Yeah. Let's just merge. I really can't. Oh, well you guys none of you guys have any movement except you. Let me do this. We'll come back to you in a second. Oh, we can grab our first religious tenant. Now, these military ones are good for war support, but not they don't do a whole lot. We don't need Seek Wisdom. It's gone already anyway. Um, Steel Knot gives us influence on mountains. Stability on rivers. Stability is always good. Although early on, Coastal Waters Lake. Wait, coastal Waters and Lake, we don't have. Fudge. We do have some luxury deposits. We can get a lot of money with a shoot um, gluttony. I don't know what we're going to do with all the money. But we can get a hell of a lot of it. The thing is, the stability thing is always really good. We do have you're okay, you're right, we do have a big lake. Build a bunch of farms around the lake, maybe. Huh. Yeah, we have tons of mountains. I think I am going to go steal knot. Now, I think this is only on mountain tiles we work, but we definitely do work some mountain tiles. This is going to be a crap ton of influence. I think we're going to do this. Do we want to change what our holy sites are going to be going forward? Um, in YouTube, I went Judaism. I think we've done Taoism. Maybe I did Shinto. I haven't done Buddhist. Let's do, let's do Buddhist. What are we going to call our religion? Uh, where do we rename our religion? Is it not here? Maybe I rename it. I can rename it whenever I want on the other screen. That's probably the case. Do Shinto? Shinto. All right, done. There it is. What are we going to call our religion? Sprinkles? The religion of sprinkles. There you go, Dynalon. So, uh, we can break, build the Great Tory for more faith and stability. Farm along there. Could get more artisan quarters. 
which we probably just should, unless I just keep pumping out units. Okay, um, how many units do we actually have? So these are scouts. I think it's time to disband these scouts. I mean, at some point they can be upgraded. Oh, you have no moving point because it's the same turn. I don't know. It feels like it should have a, a little bit more troop stuff. I want professional soldiers. Um, hang on. I need my influence for a sec. Oh, yeah, I hate this. I can't tell. It looks like 7 and 15. So that is a good tile. So we'll go and build an outpost over here. And then the plan is going to be to detach and swap this territory over to Brains and Plains. Which I think we could afford to do now. Let me save before I do it in case I do something really dumb. Close your eyes if you don't want any YouTube spoilers. Actually, I guess the auto saves mostly fill up all the, the noise there. I was just thinking it was going to tell you how many turns and, you know, what, what nation I picked. I mean, it's not like it's a really meaningful spoiler, but... Okay, so I'm going to detach... and then attach it over here. That makes this tile produce um, more science because it gets to take advantage of this mountain now. Makes Prains and Blains a, a little bit better. And then 130 to reattach something to Questionable Muffin. F5 quick save, thank you. That is very useful information. Now, I'm still worried about being attacked from the south as well. I don't know why people would attack me. It's not, you know, it's not like I've been mean to anyone. Um, should build this. I mean, stability is fine everywhere right now. But it might not be a bad idea to build the religious thing before we, you know, so that we can start pumping out some faith, which is good in general. Um often like to build... Well, I can't... It's not in a city. But I do like to build them at the borders of my empires because they do give you vision. Oh, shit. These assholes. Cancel. Cancel your move. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go back to building things. Food production's not bad. You don't have very many units right now. Or population because we built so much. Oh, let's get the pottery workshop down, finally. And I think these are probably the last three techs of the era. But if we research two more, we'll get our final star. That's going to be good enough. Um, we are quite close to the builder stars as well. And population. Now, that one might be a little harder. Because we can go above seven stars. In fact, you get a lot more um, fame if you do that. So you can stay in the era for a little bit. I'm not even talking about transcending. I'm just talking about like not advancing to the next era at all. Do buildings from unattached outposts that you build before unattaching still give yield? Yeah, I think so. I think these these buildings are still they're they're now given their benefits to planes, planes and brains. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna merge here. And I'm a little bit worried about those guys. Is, is there like a neutral state? Oh, there is. There's two actually. We should go and attack those things. Now our city limit is two, but. Going over by one is fine. It just gives you a minus 10 influence penalty, which we could absolutely just soak right now. We could consider paying off one and conquering the other. We have a lot of money. We could bribe them and eventually annex them. So if I do this, we're going to get 10 whatever to them per turn, which should outstrip purple. 
Insta-build harbors and extractors on attached territories of influence? Really? Oh, yeah. I did not realize that. Oh, and that counts as districts as well? Now, that is really handy. On the other hand, what do we what do we want to use the influence for instead? Maybe to do attaching? I don't know. How much do we cost in here? 130 and 130. I mean, we could build the, the things first. I completed that. I could advance the next era. I kind of feel like it's worth waiting for the science star, though. It's going to be another 250, yeah, 257 fame. I couldn't tell if that was a 5 or an 8. Um, from getting two extra techs, which is only going to take us three more turns. So I think we're going to wait. No, I think we should probably plop these down. You know, more free industry everywhere. Wait, why is this saying plus 15 now? Is that... Is that showing me what I've already got? It was saying plus five before. It might be totaling this up. Oh yeah, outposts will lose population because they sort of hit that cap and they can't grow. Oh, I can't decide. I think I want to attach something to each city. I think I want to save my, my points for that right now. But you see, it's like, it's something definitely worth considering. <gasps> Copper mine? Yes, please. All right, we never got that done. Now, I'm not sure, but I think the number of things needed are sort of a fixed goal for every era, because I'm pretty sure I've previously entered a new era and instantly got a star on something. So it's, I don't think it's like the golden age mechanic in um, Civilization, where you, you want to avoid overshooting in the previous era. I think it doesn't matter. Yeah, they are fixed. Uh, no, remind me later. So what we might do is attack this city and then try to integrate this one, although we definitely need more city cap stuff. But there are at least two in the next era for us to get. Uh, not here. Um, because philosophy gives us a city cap. We'll also get a religious, like a, a tenant to pick pretty quickly, actually. I don't know what unlocks it. I think it's number of population that gives it to us. There'll be a civic somewhere here that gives us plus one city cap, like very, very, very soon. It might be era driven, but I think it's unlocked by population. I don't know, does it say it? Yeah, no. So I don't know what does it. Oh, was this one? This one was coming kind of over here. Mostly because I'm actually a little bit worried about being attacked by some of these neutrals. Um, we could build the harbors on these lakes. They're not stupendous. Oh, right, we took the mountain thing. Yeah. I guess we're really waiting for extra food. That is a good maker's district. I guess I could at least build that. So at least you can keep building things fairly quickly, even if you don't have population. I guess there's never any harm in attaching more of those artisans things. That's the last of their line. Oh, is this the uh, the eunuch thing? Yeah, I'm gonna punish. So masonry. So that's in two turns. We'll get um, the extra star. Can I buy horses? Well, I'd need to open up. Um, I'd need to open up the complete trade routes diplomatically, and I'm not sure they'd say yes. I will listen to you if I must. Oh yeah, but it's because no, we have these demands. I mean, really, I'm going to refuse all these demands. Um, 
you know, we're less powerful than they are, so theoretically they could roll up with more units. I'm gonna wait before I refuse, until I maybe at least deal with the guys that are running around over here. Oh, there's a cliff here, that's why I'm not gonna be able to attack them from here. Okay, 138. So I have enough to attach. Now, Adara is going to be a good place for food. So I think what I want to do is I want to attach Adara to Brains and Plains. Because this was going to be a really food-rich area. Yeah, attach Adara. Yeah, okay. I think that I'm very much in agreement. That's going to fix the problems that Brains and Plains has. In that we can get decent farms started. I don't think we'll worry about the Confucian School. Our science rate is actually really good. Because remember, like, the Confucian Schools you've got are doing, like, 20 science. So building one for three is like, eh, maybe we'll focus on food instead. Now, your stability is still fine. We can't attach anything right now. Um, I might want to have uh, our capital grow a little bit faster. I think I like this idea. Masonry. Oh, that is going to be quite good for us. There's another scientist star. Okay. So, we could, in three turns, get another star from the merchant thing. But it would be the first star, so it's not worth very much. Everything else is pretty far away. Uh, I mean, the agrarian for the population is not that far, but our growth isn't that fantastic. Yeah, I know. Markham needs to be attached at some point. It'll get at some point. It'll get some love. So I think we're gonna progress forward. Now, what's been taken? Quite a few things have been taken. Now the Romans need iron. Now we don't even know where iron is, because I think iron, annoyingly, uh, could we have revealed iron already? Well, no, because it would be revealed. I think iron is a tech that is in the next era. Yeah, this is where we work iron. So I think iron's only revealed in the classical era. So we have no idea if we have access to iron or not. Which means we could take the Romans and whiff on iron for the Praetorian Guards. Which is annoying because we haven't been able to build a unique army yet. Or un unit. And that would suck. On the other hand, the Legion's Finest is nice for making bigger armies. Triumphal Arc is fine, actually. There's nothing wrong with that. The mines get the noble javelineers. They don't need any specific resource whatsoever. Um, and we do get a crap ton of industry. Industry is not really our problem, though. The Goths, the Gothic cavalry need horses and iron. We already know we don't have horses. The Cawthon, yeah, the Cawthon counts as three different things. It would let us use our coastal waters for slightly more interesting things. We're often to need double copper, which... Once we get this copper over here, which theoretically we can attach, yeah, with this. We have double copper now. Huh, that's tempting. What was whiskey and chocolate? Bribe! Bribe for goth. Become dark and brooding. I'll go get my eyeliner out. Um, who was it? Oh yeah, Cawthon for the war elephants. Cheaper buyout. There's actually some value in that. Presumably the Cawthons will be okay. Now the Greeks give us the hoplites, which we could build because we have copper. Um, we could build the amphitheatron over here for more science. We've got lots of science already. It also gives us Socratic method for more science. On the other hand, stacking science is kind of cool. Exumites give us more money on Muntaus, which I haven't really built too much, but the Obelisk will make us a fair amount of cash. Um, and again, we need iron, which we might have. I'm definitely not going to transcend. I want a unique unit. 
I like the Greeks, and it is nice that we could build the Hoplites. But I think our science rate's actually going to be pretty good. I think, you know what? I think we're just going to go for the elephants, just on the basis that it's cool. And we're going to hope the Cawthon has decent value on the lake that we're on. It replaces harbors. Carthage. A lot of people want Carthage. I don't know if it's the strongest, but I think it's going to be fine. So let's do that. And with our cheaper buyout costs, um, a steep before changing culture. Hold on. Are we close to an Aesthete Star? We need another 300. Oh! This! You're talking about this! Yes, sorry, my bad. Excellent point. Very much. 100%. Here, let's uh, culture flip. Let's actually use it for culture flipping. Like that. Yeah, War Elephants. You, you, you were sold on War Elephants? Done and done. Okay. Uh, what's that? What's that Latin line about Carthage and like you know never being destroyed? I'm pretty sure that's what the the Latin line is. <clears throat> or maybe it's about destroying Carthage. It's so hard to keep track. Okay. What I would very much like to do is go and beat the crap out of these guys. So I think I'm going to swing my armies this way. Cathago <laughs> Donut Eats. Yes. Carthage Eats Donuts. That sounds about right. So how are we doing over here? Yeah, we are in the lead. And yeah, we can start assimilation at some point. When we, when we get over here and just actually swallow them up. Why are you... Oh, independent people. This could have the assimilation cost. So let's go and do that. They may have more to offer than just their weapons. Assimilation does seem practical. Uh, and now, okay. Well, we only have two techs available because we actually haven't entered the next area yet. We have to end turn. Uh, we'll grab writing because we're probably going to want to go to philosophy. Maybe for the research quarters, but if nothing else, we're going to want the city cap pretty soon. As urban centers grow, both ideas and sewage are generated at a record pace. Arts and yeah, we'll check the uncovered well. resources in a sec. As military tactics and mathematical equations become as coveted as physical goods. Empires struggled to control these intangibles, however. A sum of their stability. Speaking of dealing in intangibles, am I about to see lots of offers that can't be refused? <laughs> well, the stream is going to end in a second. I did some recordings this morning. My voice is already pretty... Ah! So... Enter a new era, get declared on. Okay. I'm not sure if you should be respected or dissected. So a slight change of plans with my military units. I'm assuming they're gonna make a move on brains and planes. So, resources. Squint mode engaged. Iron here, it's not actually in our borders. So I think that's about it, right? This territory is actually unclaimed, I think. So we could have potentially gotten iron, but it wouldn't have been the most convenient thing in the universe. So our merchant button... Right, let's us invest in a resource deposit. We click it, it creates an extractor. Um, if it already exists, we'll share money with the the owner. People will cut their account as a bribe, improve relations. See, I think I can do this and just automatically connect a resource, which can be useful for my stuff inside my borders. Like we don't have this connected, right? So I can spend influence to do this which saves us production time and things like that, which is nice. And people are interested in this resource. Which is what this little marker is. Wait, don't we not have this already hooked up? 
Yeah, so this would just be investing it to give me money. Invest in this extractor. Does it just convert influence to money? Right now? Because I think it builds the extractor, but this clearly has an extractor. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, did you upgrade your persona and did you let it be the way it started? Um, I did I did to give it some stats, finally, because it was a statless persona, which is no good. Yeah, I don't think it's worth, like, right now, converting the influence to money. But it is nice if it lets you insta-connect a, um, a thing that you didn't have connected before. So we're obviously going to have to be ready to fight these guys. They're probably going to have some scary shit. But that's going to be a problem for future us. We're going to wrap up the stream here, because we've been streaming for a couple hours. Our next live stream is going to be on Saturday, uh, where maybe it'll be Humankind, maybe it'll be Six System. Yeah, that's what I th I've used it. I have used this feature f on other people's stuff. Like, the horses here aren't connected. So I could use it here, and then that would give me a ton of money. Would it actually give me a hint? Yeah, see, it splits the money and, and things and gets it hooked up for trade. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really going to be using the merchant button too much. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, next live stream's on Saturday. Maybe it's Humankind, maybe something else, maybe a combination. I don't know. Uh, Monday Motorsport, mon a Motorsport Manager, probably next Wednesday is going to be more of this as well. So looking forward to that. We are going to go and raid A Kiss for Luck right now. Give her some love. What is she playing, actually? I don't think she's got Humankind. I should buy it for her. Oh, she's playing Motorsport Manager? Holy crap! Okay, let's go watch uh, Wheelie Fast Wednesdays over at A Kiss for Luck, and I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Thanks a lot, everyone. If you haven't seen it, the Yub Tub has a completely different uh, humankind campaign currently going on. So if you're craving more humankind, do make sure to check those out. See you soon. Bye-bye.